Getting closer to that elusive day 30, trying to go 30 for 30 this month. Yesterday, I showed you the first article. First article is finished. I believe we have a list of 35 items on the website. Beautiful little article. Should get us about 600 searches a month. Hopefully we rank pretty well there. And then we decided to research the top three SEO plugins. So we opted for the SEO framework, got that set up on stream really quick, really easy. Today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through article two. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. We finished it last night. We're also gonna work on a very important thing, which is gonna provide massive leverage for the business, which is we're gonna get set up on Upwork. I'm gonna walk you through how to how to sign up, how we should structure the brief, how we should, uh, what we should think about in terms of cost to hire a content writer, how I'm thinking about all of those things. What are the pros and cons of hiring content writers on Upwork and Fiverr? What are the challenges? How do you manage that whole process? We'll talk about all those things. I mean, ideally we get to a point where we're we're putting out 20, 30 articles a week. That would be that would be awesome. There's a huge cost associated with that and we'll we'll talk about the cost, but there's also the other side to that coin, right? Is if we're right and we're building the website correctly and we're targeting the right keywords, we're putting together good content that we should make money from it in the future. And so that's the big bet. That's the bet you're gonna have to make on yourself. So first thing I wanna show you is, hey, let's look at the second article. By the way, it's starting to look nice. I wanna figure out what to do with this background. I'm not in love with it. Gotta do something with that. I was looking at some images I could replace it with last night, but I didn't find what I was really looking for. All right, so this is the second article. Really like how this came out. I wanna touch up some spacing up here, right? I think we need to change some of the column width here and I'll show you on mobile. I think it looks fine on desktop, but on mobile, I'd like to see the images be a little bit bigger. And so we did it in engraved wood watch. We got some multi tools. We got some beer glasses, diaper devices. This one's probably my favorite, the meat sampler crate. We still got to get some similar articles down here, right? We'll do that with a plugin, just not right now. Uh, we don't have enough articles where that even matters. All right, so we're going to switch gears. We're going to go into how to hire a content writer. So what does that mean? Well, we're writing these these articles ourselves currently, but we could we could go out and have we could pay some Someone to write our articles. So we got to ask some questions. Where do we hire them? How much do we pay them? How do we make sure they write what we need? What else do we check? What are what are the pros and cons? What are the what are the things you got to be careful of? All right. So where do we hire them? That's easy. We've talked about it already. Upwork. Um, and then the next question is how much do we pay? That's the age old question. So I generally say you can find writers from anywhere between one dollar per one hundred words to probably like $10 per 100 words. Now, what does that equate to? Well, $1 per 100 words is about a cent per word. Now, the opposite is true. If you have $10, you're paying about 10 cents per word. So you want to think about these things as cents per word. All right, that's how you're gonna pay folks ultimately when it comes to content writing. As I mentioned before, your industry will matter, right? So it depends on what industry you're in. How how easy is it to write for that industry, right? Do you need to have a, if you're writing for medical devices, you're gonna have to pay somebody who specializes in that. Those people aren't gonna come cheap. Now, how about for gifting or for entertainment? Well, anybody can write about those things, right? Everybody's given gifts. Everybody's watched you know, TV shows or watched entertainment listen to podcasts. So it's easy to have an opinion about those. As long as you can put sentences together, that makes sense. Now you're going to see a sliding scale of quality depending on how much you pay. All I'm going to have these folks do, I'm going to pull in the what the title needs to be, how many articles or how many reviews we're going to write. I'm going to pull in all of the products that they need to write about. They're going to have to click the link, go to the product and write 50 to 60 words per product. All right. So let's let's do the math here. My article, let's say it's a, um, a 30 review article, about 60 words per per review. I'm looking at about 1800 total words. So what is 1800 times 0 0.02? Paying about $36 per article. That would be my kind of my my early benchmark. So how long does it take me to write one of these articles? If I had all of that set up, I bet it takes me less than an hour. So that's the math. Do the math on your own industry, on your own niche. How do we make sure they write what we need? Well, we 
we write them a brief, we tell them exactly what we want, and we answer any questions they have. We wanna be a great partner for them. We wanna make their life easier. So you just write them a brief, you come up with a standardized process. You just wanna standardize this. So it's just, if you're planning on really doing some scale in article creation here, you gotta have a process. So after the article's done, we need to run through a copyright check, okay? I'll show you how we do that. Worst case scenario is somebody just literally lifts every word verbatim from Amazon, and then Google crawls our page and, and is like, uh, this is not new content, right? You're not adding value here. We also need to check on our word, word count slash character length. We we defined some very strict character lengths here that we wanted to go after, which ends up being around 50 to 60 words, give or take. And so if somebody writes 100 here, it's gonna come all the way down to here. And we don't want that. The final thing I would say in terms of check is make sure you're paying on time and reviewing work when it's done. So let's go look at our friends at Upwork. Hire proven pros with confidence. If we needed web, mobile, or software development, if we needed design or creative, we kind of do, by the way. We need somebody for writing, for sure. And then engineering architecture, we don't need uh, any of that. So this is the steps. You post a job, free to do so. We'll get a, a list of people who basically raise their hand and say, hey, I'm interested in this. Can you tell me more? And also, they know the price up front. So if they're raising their hand, they're okay with your price. And then you'll come to an agreement whether you want to hire that person or not. Um, so we want to just sign up. So let's just sign up. All right. I want to hire for a project. Don't want their emails. All right. I want to create my account here. All right. It says, hi, Matt. What brings you to Upwork today? I'm ready to post a job and see candidates. True. Well, how about we just say, I want to post a job. I guess we can always come back. Uh, this is going to be, how many employees does your company have? Uh, it's just me. Just a, a little fish in a big ocean right now. All right. So this is what it looks like when you post a job on Upwork. Review 30 products and write description review. So somebody scrolling down their Upwork feed, they're going to know, okay, this guy needs 30 products reviewed. You need to write the description. Here's how many, how many words it's going to be total. Easy peasy for them. And then we just want to make sure we post in the right job categories. All right. So this is where we would set up a description. So you tell them what you're what you need, what you're going to provide, and then just let them know, hey, these all need to pass copyright plagiarism checker. So that's pretty easy, right? They, they're just going to go through a Google sheet and write in their reviews, and then they're going to say, hey, I'm done. All right, so now you have to decide, are you just looking for a one-off project? Is this going to be an ongoing project, or is this going to be a complex project? And so I would just focus on one-time projects for now. So then it lets you add some screening questions. Don't make this a complicated process. What I would do is add at least one question to suss out the people that are just randomly applying. All right, so after you've done all of that, well, now you gotta tell them what, what you're looking for. This is gonna, you need to be focused on the tags that you want to hire for because it's gonna show up in people's feeds depending on which tags you select. And then two, you wanna make sure that it's tightly controlled around what you're looking for. And then what level of experience should your freelancer have? Entry level, intermediate, or expert? Cheapest, middle, most expensive. What makes sense for your business? For me, right now, I'm just looking for an entry level person. We'll see what I get with that. If it's the type of article I'm looking for, if not, I can bump it up to intermediate next time. What talent location? So two, two things here. If you do US only, but you don't pay enough, you're probably not going to get anybody. If you do worldwide you'll prob and, and you pay enough for US, you'll probably have to wade through a ton of applications. I'm thinking I'll start with US, see what I can get. And if not, I'll open it up to worldwide. All right, next it says, who can see your job? Do you want freelancers and agencies using Upwork and public search engines can find this job? Do you want only Upwork talent? So only Upwork users can find it? Or do you want it to be invite only? You have to invite specific freelancers or agencies. We want anybody. Now it's saying, well, let's set up your budget. What are you gonna do? You can either pay by the hour or you can pay a fixed price. With this type of work, paying by the hour doesn't make sense and it's too hard to track. You might consider paying by the hour for maybe more technical work. So that's what it looks like if you select a fixed price. We would type in 36 for this example because that's how much we've spec'd it out for. Then you hit next and then you review this bad boy. 
Now, what happens after I post this? Well, people are gonna get the opportunity to apply for it. So what does it look like when somebody applies to your job posting? This is what it looks like. Sorry, it's, uh, it's kind of side screened here, but freelancers are going to apply for your job and you're gonna see a list of them like this. You're gonna see their name, what they do. Then you'll see their rating. Uh, if they have any of these badges, you'll see what their success ratio is. If you recall just a minute ago, 80 to 90% is like good. Anything above 90% is really good. And you can hire that person. And you can hire more if you decide, hey, I really like, I like Margot and I like Andre, so I'm gonna hire both of them. And then they each have their own separate contract. And then you basically get a chat messenger. It looks something like this. All right, so um, pretty standard messenger app, right? So you have, you'll have your own thread with her about the project. And you can recontract people through the, the chat if you're interested in working with them again. So it's, it's really easy to set up a new project. So let's go back to this. Let's say, hey, I have these three really qualified people. I don't know who to choose. You'll be able to click their profile. So it's gonna tell you all about them and how it relates to what you need. And then this is what the actual profile will look. So you'll see all those scores and metrics that we had already talked about. He tells you really quick what he, what he does. When I'm going through this, all I'm looking for are, I'm looking for how they write. If I was to post this right now, what's gonna happen? So let's say I post job. I'm gonna get a bunch of people like this, like Margot, Andre, and Roman that apply. I need to be able to send them a brief. I need to be able to say, hey, this is what I'm looking for. You know, you got four days. Can you get it done in four days? And I don't have that yet. So we need to make a content brief. So the writer needs to know what the keyword is. They need to know the title. They need to know the description. Then the description will go here and then length check. So we're gonna check how many words this is. And I already have a formula right here. And we'll just set the cell to be D4 here. So let's say my name is Matt. It should be four, right? So four pops up. So what do we want the length check to be? It's gonna, I think it's gonna be around 50 to 65 words per review. So that would be an average. Not every single one needs to be 55. So we set up conditional formatting here that says past, or if it's greater than 60, be careful. And if it's less than 45, be careful. Doing some formatting. All right, so we know what the title is. We know what the link is. They need to write the description. Here's the check that goes into place to make sure they're not writing too much or too little. And then what else do they need to know? Well, they need to know what the keyword is. They need to know what the keyword is. They need to know what the title is. And then they also, are they gonna write the description? I think I'll have them write this description too. So this again, will need a, a length check. So in this case, first article, the keyword was Valentine's Day gifts, excuse me, was Star Wars Valentine's Day gifts. The title to that, which I wrote, which I will write for them as well, is 35 Valentine's Day gifts, Valentine's Day Star Wars gifts, ideas for any spouse. And then they would have to write the description. And by the way, you want to make sure that you you are sending them the document that they are to fill out because otherwise they're gonna send you Word docs and we're also gonna to wanna to give them an example. So we're gonna show them how we've written one of these before and a review before, and then also give them a link to like our competitors so that they can get a sense if they're doing it correctly. And then we wanna tell them, hey, here are other, other keywords to consider. So we want them to think about Star Wars, spouse, husband, wife, gifts, presents, Valentine's Day, love, hearts. Uh, maybe we can give them example example articles. So these are two examples that people can use. Sample product review, sample article headlines. All right, we are almost done with our content brief and we're we're literally gonna be able to just share this with our, our writers. So I think this has everything it needs. So they know what they need to write. They need to write these guys or we're gonna tell them. I'm gonna give them the products to review. I'm gonna write the titles for now. And then all they need to do is come in and write these descriptions. As a recap, today was, man, today was great, right? I, you know, I, I think the only thing right now that I wish we were a little bit further along in is having maybe like two or three more articles. If we can 
start getting content pumped out and paying, you know, paying writers for it. We'll fill up the website with some good content. Website's going to look pretty good by next week. We talked all about what, what Upwork's about. We didn't get to Fiverr yet. We'll, we'll check Fiverr out another day. Um, we're going to have plenty of freelancers through Upwork. So pick one and just go with it. And tomorrow, hopefully we'll have some people that have applied and I, I can kind of talk you through what I'm seeing. Tomorrow, I want to set up our social networks, but more specifically, I want to set up Pinterest, all right? Because we're starting to write articles and content. My industry is going to work really well on Pinterest. People go to Pinterest to catalog recipes and products and ideas and, you know, styles and all that stuff. So gifting is a huge piece of the Pinterest pie. So we're going to spend time talking about Pinterest and getting all that set up tomorrow. And hopefully we'll start getting some of our own pins up tomorrow for the two articles that we have. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Love you. Bye-bye.